Subspecies, subspecies, subspecies. Yes. 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 Hello, my fellow hunters. Did somebody say a brand new Iceborne subspecies? Oh, new Iceborne subspecies? Because it's time to talk about three that supposedly we are just straight up getting during the same talk where they first revealed acidic glavenous. Oh god, he is so cool. They ended it by saying, look out for more subspecies with this picture. So, I mean, I don't think I'm really stretching the interpretation, the implication here, because it is all about the implication because of the implication oh uh okay but then what do we think would work well for these three what would we want to see well firstly i am beyond happy that they are getting them because they are honestly three of the most interesting fun quirky fascinating monsters ever designed in the series and they kind of get instantly forgotten because they're sort of weak entry monsters and you don't really spend much time hunting them and that is a crying shame i adore pookie visually he's one of my favorite monsters full stop toby kadachi is an incredible fight, jumping from the trees, the flying squirrel gliding, the static electricity, he's beautiful, Palumu's okay, ah, <laughs> all right, I, I have my favorites, and it is heartening to know that these, well, lesser hunted monsters, and that a lot of people don't really spend a lot of time pondering, are getting a tune-up, no one even mentions me, Either way, let's talk subspecies, let's talk ideas, let's have fun. So generally when designing a subspecies, you want to either take a singular aspect of the base monster and just run with it. Like, take backflips on Rathian, make it the big deal, pick Rathian, ta-da! Or you just completely do a swap, like fire clack clack to ice clack clack. Or you kind of combine the both, where you get Anjanath, make fire lightning, focus on physical attacks enhanced by the lightning, Ooh, and that, by the way, is mm, when it comes to subspecies. So, Pokey Pokey, he does one little thing that I think is often underappreciated that I adore. Every now and then, if you let him live for long enough, and that's actually kind of a theme, a lot of these monsters do things that are really cool that you just don't see because you kill them so bloody quickly, he will eventually <laughs> out a huge cloud of poison and visually this is one of my favorite effects in all of monster hunter world it looks fantastic and it makes pookie just a silhouette behind it and if you're in it it is very obscuring it's very claustrophobic it is well a lovely way to play with one of the tools in a hunter's arsenal your vision literally your player playing the game's ability to see what the hell is going on and a lot of the time it can be frustrating if your vision is taken away in a game, so you need to do it in a way that makes sense, is creative and accepted. So, essentially I want a smoke screen pookie pookie. Uh, what they did with Camellios's fog, but like in a way that actually is visually representative of the idea and not limited by what they're working with, and now in world you could. So you have spore puffs which pookie loves to eat, you hit them and they pff, release a cloud that you can hide in, and then the monster's like, what? But in this case, the Pookie is the one releasing the cloud, and the Hunter is the one that's like, what? So go to Harfrost Reach, let's make it a bit ice body, because, you know, that's the theme. We have ourselves a more camouflaged Pookie Pookie. A little bit less colourful, still has those hints, those hues, those reflective feathers, but they're more silvery. They have little bits of purple and lighter blue, and they kind of fit more in the icy landscape. His base colour is more white, blue black and grey, blending in with the snow, the rocks, the trees, and in order to survive there against all of the big baddies, he eats the spore puffs, as he does, he eats essentially everything that grows, he really is not fussy, and he uses them as a defensive weapon to coat the area in a huge smoke screen 
and then suddenly you can't see him, or only faintly, and you as the hunter are stood in the smoke screen, and you have to really listen, you have to hear his wind-up attack, you have to be ready to react as he suddenly comes careening out of a random direction in this fog to absolutely slam into you. Hello there. Or maybe even grab you with his tongue for a full-on now Buki has a grab attack where he slams you about the place wrapped in his tongue. Ooh, that would be a lot of fun. A monster that really plays with vision. I also love the idea of a Pookie Pookie that, well, uses itself as a slinger because Pookie eats so many of the plants we use as slinger ammo. So imagine a Pookie firing scatter nuts at you, firing slinger thorns at you, firing red pits or bright moss, why the hell not? Firing anything that you can find at you. So any slinger ammo you come across, anything that falls on the ground, the Pookie's like, ah, oh, I see that. <sighs> Whips out its tongue, grabs it, and then, oh god, this Pookie is firing piercing pods, cleaving down hunters. How much fun would that be if you take it a step further and have a utility Pookie Pookie? Because that's how crafty they have to be to survive in Horfrost. And they are crafty. They breed by putting their babies in a Murnos nest and then tricking the Murnos into raising it as its own so it teaches it to fly and what plants to eat. I mean, that is efficiency. So yeah, that is something I think would work wonderful for Pookie Pookie. A utility, obscuring, trickster-type rogue surviving on the Horfrost Reach, a little flock of them by wits alone. Ah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Let me know what you think. I realize these aren't crazy in detail because I do want to talk about, you know, three of them. And normally I spend like 25 minutes per one because really all I have to do meaningful in my life is talk about this game. Toby Kadachi. Now, a while back, I did do a very in-depth idea known as the Blast Kadachi. Emblazoned Toby Kadachi. Hello. Lives close to the recess, or indeed on it, has a diet of uh, blast toads, and his fur is matted with blast powder from the atmosphere, and indeed from the little critters. It turns a ready, more crisp, burnt look, and, you know, when it goes onto the tree, and does its ultimate attack where it leaps off, flips, and absolutely slams into the ground with the bulk of its tail, yeah, that attack would cause the biggest explosion, the impact triggering the powder. And the neat little thing is, now you've got this sudden, well, pfft, a blast of hot air is produced that the Toby, which is still airborne from the force of the explosion, can spread its glider flaps catch the air that it just generated and fly a little bit further on and do it again in a huge tail slam combo ballerina of death. So imagine explosive Toby Kadachi that's generating its own air currents to glide on. It just, oh, I still think, look, I'll be honest, I think this is a beautiful idea. It works on so many levels. A absolutely awesome fun fight ecologically. And you know, I, I love it. I love that idea. But I realized just saying that again is a little bit on the lazy side, so let's do something probably also a little bit lazy, but undeniably cool! Oh my god, he's so goddamn cool! Because Toby is cool, he really is. I think he might be just in the top five just purely awesomely done monsters in world, and as I said at the start, it's such a shame he's by the wayside. I actually would like to give him his honor as a variant. Not just a subspecies, give him the variant treatment. Give him a form that is truly powerful, that makes him a genuine threat. And Toby has a perfect avenue for you to do this. What do a lot of the variants have in common? They are essentially permanently enraged, or permanently in a state that makes them very powerful. Well, Toby, if you let him live long enough, will fully charge up and just look amazing. <laughs> Fur standing on end, crackling electricity. It is wonderful. And you know, he is threatening in this form. Even as lowly as he is, Tempered Toby charged up hits like an absolute truck. So, obviously, what I'm going to say for the Flying Thunder Wyvern is have him permanently charged. His base state is fully 
charged, and then he can get himself in uh, to an even further charged state, a super charged state. In fact, what would you guys call this? That's that's what I'd like to know. What would you call a permanently supercharged Toby Kadachi that can go even further beyond? I uh, would like your ideas on that one. But in this state, then, I want him to really be an electrified badass. Essentially, having this subspecies have a turf war with Zenoga, or variant, have a turf war with Zenoga, who, let's be honest, we're going to get, and have it be a draw, just to show you how badass he actually is when you fight this variant. And the key thing I'd love to give him is the ability to fire out little electrical clouds like a paratoad, maybe completely pulse current through the air itself, ionize it, and make these little hazards that if you walk in, you get guaranteed instantly paralyzed, maybe have them generate from his big tail hit. And then if we're going to go a little bit more out there, because let's be honest, whenever you're doing a potential hype talk theory idea video, you got to have one that's a little bit ridiculous. And, you know, I have been looking at Frontier a lot for that series, so fuck it. Let's play with magnetism. And the thing is, we have had Bolt Reaver Astalos, who summons a fucking black hole. So it's not like it's unheard of in the main series. Let's have Toby's tail able to magnetize and then once it's magnetized he like i don't know electrifies it and i realize it's not a coil of metal to turn into a magnet with electricity but let's pretend it works a biological equivalent in this variant it's developed in such a way that he can supercharge his tail and magnetize it and obviously hunters are coated in armor that for the most part is metal or their weapons he can attract you to his tail and then essentially bat you sending you flying with it like the uh, human ball you have now become. How much fun would that be? And I don't care, you probably sat there like, seriously? Because, you know, that's fair enough. But it would be so much fucking fun. <laughs> and you know it. <laughs> All right, I'd mean, love your ideas as well. I really would. And then finally, Palumu, who admittedly, as I said, I like the least out of the three. And this one was harder to do, it really is. I like the idea of a cold air Palumu on Hawfrost, that when he suctions it in, it's almost just freezing air, so he gains some ice fun, like Legiana coating the ground, maybe sliding himself in his ball form across the ground on frozen slicks of ice, but I actually want to take it in the direction of Iron Fur Palumu, a much denser creature, which is a great great little statement by itself but no his fur is very much lengthened it is bristly it is much heavier and he can still flow he can take in more air and really power himself up but he is a little bit slower but he hits so much harder the inspiration really is to take his main big attack where he floats above you and just drops and actually make it a wrecking ball <laughs> Like, he drops, cracks the ground, earthquakes, tremors, and just absolutely decimates where he lands because of just how, well, the heavy he now is. <laughs> Look, okay? I think it would be lovely. He's just covered in grey bristles. The white is now black. And as much as I love that Palumu is based off one of the most adorable species. Look at the little furry puffball bats. I just, oh, they're adorable. We can have a bit more of a sinister one that's aggressive attacks on sight, unlike the Karma Palumu, and have him really throw his weight around. Make up for his loss of general speed by blasting out air after he lands in this, you know, essentially wrecking ball form and firing himself at you with a blast of air as he careens across the ground, essentially like a bowling ball and the hunters of the pin, and he's having a shot. That type of setup, I think that would be so much fun. And because he needs to take on extra air, he is much more adept at sucking it in, so you can actually play around with Palumu's attack where he does draw the hunter in front of him. This doesn't happen enough, and it's not really effective enough for how much of a fun idea 
here. It is a suction vacuum. Come here, Hunter. So we should have that really enhanced, kind of like when Gameth does it with her trunk and vacuums in the Hunters in front of her. We need something like that in world that is actually effective. So this would be a much larger Pookie, almost double the size, darker, much heavier, cracks the ground when it lands, slower generally, but moves in bursts of speed and can absorb the mo monster. Yes, the monster, the hunter, though I guess we are the real monsters, aren't we? And a much greater efficiency. I realize this one is the least refined. I do, but I just want Balubu to make himself a bowling ball and attack you. Is that so wrong <laughs> oh, and you also I, I i do like the idea of ball palumu being on the half frost reach landing in snow and just using himself as a snowball like rolling and it just gets larger and larger and larger as more snow fits to his fur i i don't know why that would happen but it, i just i like the idea of it either way let me know your thoughts guys on these three getting a subspecies tune up but for now like if you enjoyed this subscribe for more hit the bell and i'll see you soon a good Bye. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo. But I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song. And don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit. <laughs>